Greetings all. Vigyana Bhairava Tantra, verse 47, Yukti number 21. Sarvam deha gatam dravyam viad vyaptam mergekshane vibhavaye tatastasya bhavana sasthirabhavet. Which means, O oh, doe eyed woman, one may imagine that all the tissues of the body are pervaded by space. Through this practice, one's meditation will become stable and steady. Well, the first thing that catches one by surprise with this verse is the vocative, O oh, doe-eyed woman, because by this point, the reader or practitioner might have forgotten the frame story, which is that this whole text is a dialogue between Shiva and Shakti, Bhairava and Bhairavi. So, here we get a reminder of that fact with this word mergekshane, which literally means, O oh, woman whose eyes are like those of a doe or a deer or an antelope or a gazelle. <laughs> so what's interesting is that almost all the translations that are out there have the phrase gazelle-eyed woman or gazelle-eyed goddess which makes me think that the translators, um, the more recent translators are perhaps relying too much on earlier translators like uh, Jaideva Singh, because there's no real reason to prefer gazelle here to, to doe or antelope or any other murga, because a murga is uh, any kind of four-footed, cloven, hoofed beast of prey. Um, that has big soft eyes, <laughs> you know? So it's really a more general term. Um, Mergekshane, O doe-eyed woman, because it's in the feminine, or O doe-eyed goddess. Anyway, um, so there's no philosophical point there other than to remind us of the context that this is a dialogue, that, this, that these practices emerge in the context of um, relating, <laughs> of consciousness relating to its own energy, Shiva and Shakti. Okay, let's look at the other words of the verse. Sarvam dehagatam dravyam, viad vyaptam, means all the substances within the body pervaded by space. So we need a verb that's found at the beginning of the second half. Vibhavayet, one should imagine or one may imagine that all the uh, tissues of the body are pervaded by space or sky. So here the commentator helps us out and uh, tells us that the dravyas are indeed the dhatus of Ayurveda. So what are those uh, dhatus? Well, there's different lists and different Ayurvedic sources. If you look on um, modern websites, there's a kind of consensus of seven Ayurvedic dhatus, such as um, muscle, blood, fat, bone, marrow, lymphatic fluid, skin, and so on. And actually in the primary sources, we sometimes see seven dhatus, sometimes we see 10, but really it doesn't, matter so much for the uh, purpose of this particular meditation. Um, we can work with the primary dhatus, hair, skin, muscle, blood, fat, bone, and marrow. And the nice thing about that particular list is that it's a progression from more external to more internal. So this seems to be what the uh, text has in mind. Certainly, that's how the commentator, the Sanskrit commentator, Shivopadhyaya, takes it, that one should imagine that the tissues of the body are pervaded by space one by one, and thereby, final phrase of the uh, verse, tatastasya bhavana sastira bhavet, 
through this practice, uh, therefore, one's meditation will become stable and steady. And there we get the same word found in that famous sutra from the Yoga Sutra um, that describes asana, sthira sukham asanam, right? That one's posture should be sthira, stable and sukha, stable and steady, as well as sukha, um, pleasant and easeful. So sthira means stable and steady, and indeed all these words are related. I mean, the English words are actually cognate with um, meaning linguistically related to the Sanskrit word. That's why you get the same cluster of consonants at the beginning. Sthira, stable, steady. All these words are uh, linguistically related. Um, since, as hopefully you know, <laughs> uh, English is part of the same language family that Sanskrit is as well. Okay, so let's just do the actual practice. This is one that it's better to do <laughs> rather than to talk about so much. So take a deep breath, relax. Doesn't really matter what posture you're in for this practice. It can be any relaxed posture in which you don't fall asleep. Take a few deep breaths. Now please bring your attention to your hair. Imagine that your hair is made of nothing but space or sky. Now bring your attention to your skin. Imagine that your skin is made of nothing but space or sky. Now please bring attention to the muscle layer of the body. Imagine that your flesh, your muscle, is made of nothing but space or sky. Now please bring your attention to the fat layer of the body. Imagine that the fat is made of nothing but space or sky.
Now bring your attention to the blood in your veins and arteries. Imagine that the blood is made of nothing but space or sky. Now bring your attention to the bones. Imagine the bones are made of nothing but space or sky. Now bring your attention to the marrow of the bones, the innermost marrow of the bones made of nothing but space or sky. Om. As you probably noticed, I was saying space or sky because the word <laughs> in the Sanskrit verse, the, the word viat is used, which can indeed mean either. And if this word is chosen advisedly by the original author, um, then we should uh, contemplate in such a way where there's no real difference between what we understand by space and what we understand by sky. And indeed, there's that region of the upper atmosphere where it gently shades off <laughs> from sky into space and uh, it's a very beautiful region of the atmosphere it's the blue of the sky becomes a little bit darker but it's still very blue but the idea here is not necessarily to visualize uh, in fact it's not to visualize the tissues of the body as you know blue sky although if that happens for you that's totally fine 
but rather that the tissues of the body are just space, are just openness, expansive, spacious openness. Okay. So, if you didn't already realize that this video is a reshoot, I did this one before, but uh, the sound wasn't good. So we're told by the author of the scripture, putatively Bhairava, that through this practice, one's meditation will become stable and steady. Um, for me, I experienced that in terms of a settling, right? That through this meditation of contemplating all the tissues of the body as space or sky, there's a kind of quiet settling. You know, the mind settles into its essence nature through this meditation. It's one way to phrase it. Any questions or comments? Once again, thank you to all the patrons on Patreon. If you want to check out the Patreon page, please go to uh, patreon.com slash Harish, H-A-R-E-E-S-H. And you can also offer your support there, $1 a month on up to 108 a month, if you're so moved. And thank you to all of those who are supporting and making this content possible. Om.